Maxie Jones. Maxie, I know you, Maxie. Where are you? Come on up. That's right. Oh, you got socks. You got socks. Got socks on, man. You got socks. How are you? <laughs> yeah, he's got socks. Good evening, everybody. So, on, on September 11th, 2001, I lived in Manhattan. And, uh, but where I lived in Manhattan, I lived, I lived in Harlem, so I was actually quite far from what took place at the World Trade Center. As a matter of fact, I was unemployed, and I slept through it all. Uh, and I was awakened by phone calls from people from out of town who called me to ask me, hey man, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, are you okay? <laughs> Until finally I, I caught on to what, what happened and I, I stepped outside of my apartment and I took a look downtown. And it's interesting that someone wrote that tweet because I took a look downtown just in time to see one of the towers fall. And I actually had the same thought how strange that's going to be with just one tower standing there. Um, I went back into my apartment and I made a lot of phone calls to people to see if they were okay and a lot of people were calling me from out of town to see if I was okay. But after all the phone calls had, had come to an end, everything just became really, really depressing because I had nobody to call, there was nothing to watch on television, except the same old news over and over. There was nothing to listen to on the radio. And pretty much by that time, everybody was like home with their families, whoever could be home with their families. So I got really, really depressed. So a friend of mine from DC called and she asked me, um, she, she, could, she could sense the depression in my voice. So she asked me to come on down and visit. She said, why don't you just come down here and hang out with me? So I jumped in my car to head to DC. When I got on the New Jersey Turnpike, I saw that there were no other cars except for me and that I could drive as fast as I wanted. So I figured what I'd do is I would go into the first rest area, fill up my gas tank, get some coffee, and just blow down the turnpike. It's about 120 miles, and I figure I'll knock it out and cut the four hour drive down to about two and a half hours. <laughs> when I pulled into the rest area, the first rest area, I was blown away because the whole, the rest area parking lot was filled with all these ambulances from all these different small towns and cities in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland. And they were all these different colors. They were purple, orange, yellow, silver, white. I, I, I'm trying to think of as many colors as I can because they were just all these colors. I went into the rest area and there were EMTs all over the place. Um, they were talking and sleeping and the restaurant was feeding them for free. I went and got my coffee and when I went to pay for it, the lady was like, oh no sir, this is free. And I said, no, I'm not an EMT. They were like, that's okay, it's free for everybody. So when I went back to get in my car, just as I was leaving, the announcement came over the loudspeaker saying, Attention all EMTs, um, thank you for offering your service, but your help is not going to be needed in New York City. You can go back to your respective homes. And everyone just got really sad because you could tell they really, really wanted to help. So while I was filling up my gas tank, um, all, all these ambulances were pulling out of the rest area. And I waited for as many to leave as I could, and then I pulled out, and I started blowing down the highway. Again, trying to get there as quickly as possible. But when I got down the highway, I came up on a, a line of about 25 ambulances. They were all riding in a straight row in one lane, one after the other. And I just got up to them and I slowed down, right? I couldn't pass them. I just stayed right behind them. And when they reached, when, whenever one ambulance got to its exit and pulled off, the whole line would, would flash their lights two of them, and they would flash their lights back, like as if they were saying, hey man, get home safe, you know. And this happened all the way down through New Jersey into Delaware. I never passed them. I stayed behind them. New Jersey, Delaware, 
into, when we got close to the, um, to the border of Maryland, it was just me and one ambulance in front of me. So I was like, I wonder what, I wonder what that guy's gonna do when he exits off. <laughs> so when, when, we, when he got to his exit and he started pulling off, I flashed my lights at him. And then he flashed his lights back at me. And I realized that they knew that I had been behind them the whole time. Now, after that point, it was just me for the rest of the way. And I don't really know how long it took me to get where I was going. And I have no idea what time I got there. But, but after that point, I wasn't in any hurry anymore. Thanks.